Welcome to Hobby with Ollie. My name is Ollie, and this is my hobby. Let's talk about troops. In war games like Warhammer 40,000, they're some of the most important miniatures on the tabletop, boldly holding objectives against giant monsters or terrifying elite enemies, or running away if you're more into playing Gretchen. But here's the unfortunate truth. I don't really like painting troops very much. As you can see by my painted shelf, anytime I'm presented with a new character, I'm gonna paint that over painting my Blood Angels troops. This is because with a character miniature, I have a chance to kind of practice my skills, to improve, maybe try out some new techniques. But painting troops is just a bit boring. Or is it? Today, I'm gonna to show you a way that I use to get a squad of assault intercessors painted up in a Blood Angels scheme. The tips and tricks that I'm going to show you for batch painting your squad should be applicable to any type of troops that you want to get painted up on the table. So get your paintbrushes and let's get started. Before embarking on a batch paint of a squad, it's important to think about the colours that you're going to use. Colour schemes are a complex topic that deserve their own video, but for today the basic principle we're going to be operating on is we'll have a main colour, which in this case is our red armour, and then we're going to be picking out a few little bits that are going to be highlights that are going to give us some details. For my details, I've decided to focus on the chest aquila and the weapons, which I'll be painting silver, and then the pouches and the belts, which I'll be painting with a brown leather. Make sure that you're selecting colours which do stand out against your base colour. I've done a few swatches to show you what I'm talking about here. I've started with Mephiston red, and then in the centre, I've got Balthazar gold followed by Auric armour gold on the top, and gunmetal followed by chrome from Vallejo on the bottom. Now this isn't a like-for-like -like comparison because these are different colours from different manufacturers. But what I'm trying to get at here is when choosing colour schemes, choose colours that are going to complement each other and stand out from your base colour. Let's get on with painting our minis. Let's talk about priming. I prime my models black using my airbrush, but you could use a rattle can primer, and in fact that's normally what I do, I just happen to have run out of rattle can spray before painting these models. The reason we're starting from a dark base coat is because of the way that we're going to be painting up this squad. We're going to start from our darkest colour, which is also going to be staying in all the shadows, and then we're going to slowly build up with lighter and lighter colours towards a light source. If you're going to be doing your squads with very light coloured armour, like white or yellow, you'll probably need to start from either a white or off-white undercoat. Now the main colour for most minis in 40k, and in fact in a lot of war games, is going to be the armour, clothing or skin. So that's where we're going to start for these models. I'm starting from a base coat of corn red, which I'm going to apply over each member of the squad using a large brush and thinned down paint. You want to do this in a batch style, so start by painting the first layer on the first guy, then move on to the second guy and paint in the layer in just the same way. This way, by the time you've finished all five for their first layer, you can come back in and do a second thin layer of corn red to make sure you get good coverage. As we mentioned, we don't need to worry if there's a little bit of black showing through because most of this is going to be covered up with other colours. For this whole process, I would recommend the use of a wet palette. The wet palette is a really invaluable tool when it comes to batch painting squads. It lets you keep nice, fresh, wet paint ready to go on your model at a moment's notice. and means you don't have to keep making lots of trips back to the pot. I'll also occasionally use a hairdryer to dry the paint in between layers, just to stop me from getting my grubby fingers all over the fresh paint that I've just put down. Now, a wet palette doesn't have to be very expensive. In fact, my first ever wet palette was just a couple of pieces of kitchen roll, a little piece of baking parchment in a Tupperware. Um, I've upgraded since then, um, and that's the one you'll be seeing throughout the course of the video, but you definitely don't need to. There are lots of really great painters who get by with a very basic homemade wet palette. The next color I'm gonna use is Mephiston Red. I'm gonna use this as the main color for my armor, what artsy folk will refer to as the mid-tone, and so I'm gonna be applying it over pretty much all of the armor leaving corn red only in the very deepest recesses and shadows. Now let's address the elephant in the room. I'm not going to be painting this squad in the heavy metal style. The heavy metal style, for those new to the hobby, is something that you've probably seen even if you've not heard of it. It's what Games Workshop uses on all their box art as well as on their website. The heavy metal style relies on very precise edge highlights to get that effect on the model. I moved away from this style a while ago. My current painting style revolves around a volumetric lighting effect. Now I'll be the first to admit that I don't understand very much about volumetric lighting. But up on the screen are some examples of the effects that I've managed to get with my painting style, and I think they look really cool. If you follow along with my steps, you should be able to get a similar result on your minis. Imagine there's a light source shining on your model. In my case, I tend to do it above and to the right, 
and then you just color your model lighter colors nearer to that light source. This approach saves me from having to do super detailed edge highlights on every single panel of the model, which is key to the heavy metal style, and leads to a bit more of a realistic look. Let me know if you're a diehard heavy metal painter or if you have your own style that you've developed in the comments down below. Let's come on to the next step, glazing. This is probably one of the techniques that puts people off from trying different painting styles, but glazing doesn't need to be scary. Just make sure you thin down your paints more than you would usually, and then use it as a semi-transparent layer that smooths out the edges between your different colours. I use this particularly on the dark side of my models to make sure that there weren't any harsh lines where the corn red and mephiston red meet. If you're interested in learning more about glazing, you can check it out in my non-metallic metal death company video linked in the top right hand corner. This is also where you're going to get your money's worth out of your hairdryer because the layers of glaze that you apply are very thin and dry very quickly. Next is our highlight colour, which is going to be Evil Sun Scarlet. We're going to be focusing this on the areas that are closest to our light source or that will be catching the light. If you're ever in any doubt, just go for the easy wins, things like the shoulder pad, the top of the backpack and any upraised limbs. You may also notice that I'm using very thin paint here. This actually saves me from doing a glazing step after painting on my Evil Sun Scarlet because the different layers act as a glaze by themselves. For a final flourish, we're going to come in with a spot highlight. This is for the very brightest areas, and for this I'm using an orange made from mixing 50-50 of Evil Sun Scarlet and Uriel Yellow. This layer should be used sparingly and only on the very brightest parts of the model. Focus on the centre of the shoulder pads, the top of the helmet, and any upraised limbs. Once you're done with that spot highlight, that's the armour all done. Next, it's time for all the metal details. I'm going to be starting from Chaos Black here, so just going over everything and giving it a black base coat. Then my first metallic is going to be Gunmetal from Vallejo, which I'm going to shade over with Non Oil, before highlighting up with Chrome again from Vallejo. This was one of the longer steps on the models, just because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing any areas, and because you're starting to use a bit of a finer brush to get into all those details. Sticking with the metallics, next up I did the gold trim. Each of these guys has a piece of gold trim on his left forearm, indicating him as a veteran, so I painted that up with the following colours. Retributor Armour and Reichland Flesh Shade. I then touched this up with Vallejo Gold as a highlight. Next, I painted up all the leather details. The colours I used here are Rhinox Hide and Agrax Earthshade. Now we come on to the next and slightly daunting step of our paint job, painting in the eye lenses. The actual paints used here are very simple. I used Vallejo Arctic White, followed by a layer of Waystone Green. Now this stage is a little bit tricky. Get your thinnest brush that you have, with the sharpest point, and then thin down your white paint to put it into the eye sockets. It's perfectly normal to mess up here, in fact if you look closely you can see me going back in with some of my mid-tone colours and then trying again. Once you've managed to get the white into the right place around the eye lenses, you can then put over a layer of waystone green. We're now going to do the black areas which include the gun casing and any bits of ribbing in between the armour. For these, I'm going to be using a Baden Black, and then highlighting up with Eshin Grey. No need for a shade here, as we can't really go darker than the black that we've got in the recesses. Now I've left in here some of the mixing of the paint, just so you can see how thin I'm getting my paint before applying it to the model. You don't want to be fighting with the brush, it should just be flowing into all those recesses, particularly when you're dealing with really detailed small areas. Now the last thing to tackle are the Purity Seals. I used a very simple technique for these, Screamer Pink on all of the wax seals, and then a mix of Rhinox Hide and Wraithbone as a base coat for the parchment. Then I shaded over everything with Agrax Earthshade and went over the parchment with pure Wraithbone. Now that's all the details on our models, except for the bare head on the sergeant. However, I'm going to leave that for today and maybe cover it in a future video. Let me know if you'd be interested to see that in the comments down below. By using batch painting, we managed to get this squad all painted up in about six hours. 
Now that might seem like a long time, but that's just over an hour per model, and you can see they're up to significantly better than battle ready standard. Now keep an eye on the channel, make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already, because I've got some exciting videos coming up on some Blood Angels characters. In the meantime, my name has been Ollie, this has been my hobby, and I'll see you next time.